Okay, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so uh, the last workshop of the day, uh, I hope you'll uh, bear with me. I know I stand between you and a cup of tea or, uh, or perhaps an early supper. Um, so today I'm going to uh, give you some rudiments of uh, uh, a sort of uh, self-defense course when faced with ethical dilemmas. So as usual, in every, any business cycle, there is a promise, a delivery, and a reward. Here, the promise is that uh, I, I hope this little workshop, this very quick workshop, will uh, better arm you when, when you face uh, ethical dilemmas. We all face uh, dilemmas, uh, small ones uh, from time to time, large ones hopefully less often. Uh, the delivery will be this workshop, but it's, it's a very light workshop because 40 minutes is uh, simply not enough to, to, uh, to go down uh, an ethical rabbit hole uh, with any significant uh, uh, texture and subtlety. And the reward, well, the reward uh, really in the case of this workshop is only something you can assess in uh, 30 to 50 years. Uh, uh, have, have, have these uh, small tools helped you? Uh, not regret too many decisions under pressure and uh, hopefully uh, uh, when you look back uh, this this little workshop will have helped a little. Um, so this is part of um, uh, an ethics course I, I've, I've been teaching for uh, almost 10 years now and uh, there are really three main pillars. The first one is to think critically about thinking and this is essentially applied philosophy of ethics, applied philosophy of logics, and applied uh, epistemology or philosophy of knowledge. Um, the second part is uh, uh, more technical. It's uh, uh, a couple of tools on how to analyze ethical dilemmas and how to discern the underpinnings of a specific uh, dilemma in practice. And finally, how to hone your rhetorical skills so that you are able to defend yourself through discourse and deflect uh, whomever is uh, uh, confronting you with an ethical dilemma. So today I will mostly focus on this, the, set, the middle part, but it's impossible not to, to uh, cover uh, some uh, dimension of metaethics, and uh, I will also, uh, in, in a practical exercise, try and help you uh, develop an argumentation to defend yourself uh, faced with an ethical dilemma. So please feel free to ask any questions uh, as you did in previous workshops in the chat, and I will answer them as soon as I notice them. So uh, my main message today is that you should start pulling together your go to hell capital now. And when I mean capital here, I mean financial capital, human capital, social capital, cultural capital, and natural capital. And uh, obviously, I don't have time today to introduce these concepts to, to you. I, I know some of you may have already uh, uh, discovered, explored these in, in, the, in the context of your dissertation. Uh, development or uh, perhaps even in uh, practice courses earlier in your, in your training. Um, if, you, uh, if you have questions about these, we can talk about them, but they're not the main focus here. Uh, so we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna straight uh, start you with an ethical dilemma. So uh, this is the, the case I'm put, putting forward to you. Lee is a doctoral student working on a paper with co-authors Ali and Chris from other universities, and they are also doctoral students. Funding for the project, but no intellectual input was provided by both Ali's advisor and Chris's advisors. Ali's advisor is called Pat. Chris's advisor is called Sandy. Chris confides to Lee that Sandy expects full co-authorship for the paper and the implication that either the project will lose funding or Chris's graduation could be compromised or both. Uh, Pat, on the other hand, uh, the other advisor makes no such claim. 
if you were in Lee's shoes, what would you do? So uh, I'm going to let you go into uh, your respective breakout rooms. I would like year one students and pre-doctoral students to go to room one, uh, year two students to go to room two, and otherwise, so year three and upwards uh, students to go to room three and discuss among yourselves, uh, how would you, how would you um, face this dilemma? And I hope that you all see that there is a dilemma here. Any questions before you move to the rooms? No, okay, uh, then uh, uh, please go to the rooms, start discussing. I will, I will uh, move into, uh, into the rooms from time to time and you can, you can just uh, uh, send me a chat if you want me to come into a particular room to discuss, uh, to discuss uh, something with you. I think Hasna and Rita will assign you to different rooms. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the students are free to join the room uh, uh, themselves. Uh, we set it up so that they, they, they don't need to be assigned. Okay. And there is already uh, uh, four people in room one, one in room two and uh, uh, one in room three. Yeah, so maybe you can very quickly tell them, Mark, how can they, can go, they go to, to the room? Well, there, there should be a breakout room button at the bottom uh, of their, uh, in, in their Zoom menu uh, at the bottom or at the top, depending on their device. Uh, room free, uh, what action did you suggest uh, Lee undertake? Uh, we suggested that Lee would uh, has to find out the rules. He has to find out about the rules first. No, but okay. this is room three, not room one. <laughs> it's okay now. Oh, that's room one. Okay, so yeah, that's room one. Room one. Said, find out what the rules are. Okay. Uh, okay, so room two. What did room two come up as a plan of action? We said that uh, Lee should speak to her advisor, so her advisor can speak uh, directly to Chris's advisor, which is Sandy, because yes. as an advisor, I think that she uh, or he has more power to talk professionally to okay. Chris's advisor. Okay. So, in other words, ask advisor for advice. Yes. After all their jobs, so very good. And finally, room three. Okay, we said that um, after um, after asking with the supervisor, I think we should accept um, uh, we should accept him as a co-author because funding is as important as um, writing the um, the article, and without funding, um, the article will not be possible. Okay, so uh, so. Uh... So room three decided to uh, uh, accept uh, Sandy's demand. Okay. So that's an interesting uh, development. Um, so as you can see, uh, different levels of maturity in doctoral programs have come up with uh, different uh, different answers and. Uh, uh, we, we have, uh, I would say, from the most uh, legalistic to the most political outcome, uh, although 
I'm not saying that uh, everyone in each room necessarily agreed with this plan of action. Obviously, uh, in, in room one, there were a lot of people. So you see, uh, what the main lesson here is, is that dilemmas are hard. So uh, let's move on to uh, a second exercise. And let me share my screen again. There we go. Can, uh, can, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, apparently, I can't. I can't go full uh, full screen anymore. Okay. So the second exercise I want you uh, to undertake is uh, first of all on your own. Think about what values you embody. And if your if your institution, whether it's your university or your business school or in, in some cases, it could be a smaller part of the business school. If they have any uh, claimed values, you can compare uh, their values with, uh, with your own and, and, and contrast them, of course. And the second thing I want you to do is to find a buddy in class. I hope everyone knows someone in the class and just sh share with each other uh, the values that you selected to, to, that you identify with, all right? I'm not asking you to share with the whole class because uh, that, can, uh, that can be a, a little much for, 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 for some students, but uh, you should be able to, to voice your values in a, in a trustworthy circle. So uh, please do that. And uh, if anyone, uh, I, 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 I must say that there are many more attendees than I expected. So uh, if, uh, if some of you need to uh, cluster in group of threes, uh, do so, but don't, don't make the, your, your group larger than uh, two or three, because then it will take longer to, to share the values with everyone and so on. All right, so uh, um, go ahead, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, talk to you in, uh, uh, let's say 10, 10, 15 minutes. All right. Okay, prof. Uh, once again, uh, you may use the chat to, uh, to share. I just, yeah. we, we don't see any more the brick uh, rooms. Oh, they, they disappeared. Yeah. Oh, no, no, but you don't need them for this exercise. Ah, okay. If uh, I mean to to do your individual reflection, you just need uh, mm -hmm. uh, yourself and uh, your mind, and if you like uh, a piece of paper and uh, and a pen. And uh, if you have a buddy, uh, you already know how to reach out to them. So use a private channel to do so. Uh, of your choice. Okay, prof. And uh, the reason I'm, uh, I'm uh, conducting this exercise now, for those of you who are interested in uh, research into ethical issues, uh, is that uh, there are studies that have demonstrated that uh, people are more likely to defend their values if, they, if they've uh, undertaken uh, the exercise of self-discovery of their values, and if they've already voiced them before being faced with a dilemma. So this is part of uh, you building your, your uh, uh, self, uh, uh, self coping mechanisms to, to face future dilemmas. Your values with uh, your buddies. Um, once it's uh, once you you've done so, uh, please uh, signal you're you're ready to, to rejoin the class by by uh, putting uh, putting that you're 
Does someone need a, a few more minutes or can we, uh, can we proceed? Okay, I guess I guess we can proceed. So, uh, moving on to uh, the second. Uh, uh, the second part of the uh, of the workshop, uh, the the ethical dimensions. So, um, uh, Rushford Kidder um, identified. <coughs> sorry four dimensions to ethical dilemmas. Now, naturally, all dilemmas don't articulate all dimensions, but it's, it's uh, every ethical dilemma exists, uh, displays tension across at least one dimension and sometimes two, often two. So the first dimension is truth versus loyalty. So uh, there can be dilemmas where uh, uh, you're asked to be loyal to a version that is less than truthful, and uh, and uh, the and what you want to do is uh, be uh, faithful to the truth. So that's that's obviously a dilemma. Second is individual versus community. So uh, this is slightly different uh, than uh, uh, loyalty because it doesn't have a truth or a falseness uh, uh, situation. It's just that uh, sometimes your, 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 your tension is between going it alone or uh, staying within a group, within a pack. So that's, that's, that's the second dimension. The third one is short versus long-term. So you may, uh, you may be faced with uh, immediate benefits versus uh, uh, long-term uh, fallback if you pick the immediate benefits or conversely, uh, if you don't go for the immediate uh, quick win, you may, uh, you may have uh, better benefits in the long-term. And, and uh, this is something that you will obviously face within your dissertation because, uh, and I'm sure this is something that was uh, uh, that you you were you already explored earlier today in another workshop is that uh, to do uh, the best quality research requires more time, but it does postpone your your you uh, publishing and uh, but the benefit is that you may publish in a higher quality journal. So that is clearly a dilemma between uh, publishing quickly in uh, lower level journals versus publishing something more significant that will make a greater impact on your reputation, but uh, which would postpone uh, uh, the reward for you. And finally, justice versus mercy. That's basically a dimension where you, uh, you go for the general, you follow the general rules versus uh, looking at extenuating circumstances in, uh, in a particular case. That means that you may not apply the rules as, as rigidly as you would if you follow the justice path. I, um, uh, I, I believe uh, these are all self-explanatory, but if you need me to explain any of these, please uh, raise your hand virtually now, and I will go into more detail into these four dimensions. Oh, and I see that uh, um, uh, some of you are, are uh, posting your values in, uh, in, in the chat. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's very welcome, of course, but don't feel obliged to do so. Um, uh, what's important is that uh, you, you voice them to yourself and in, uh, in uh, trusted circles. So, so uh, um, we, we, will, the, we ha will have a final exercise now where we'll try to put all of this together. But before we do so, is everyone clear about these four dimensions or do I need to, uh, do I need to go into more detail about them? Mm -hmm. 
So, okay. So I guess I guess uh, my my uh, my English is clear to to uh, to all of you. Uh, oh, okay. More detail. All right. So uh, let me give you an example of uh, uh, a dilemma between truth and loyalty. So um, imagine that uh, you. Um, uh, you are grading papers as a TA and one of your friends made a mistake and you're grading his or her paper. Do you uh, misgrade and hide the mistake made by your friend or do you grade honestly the paper in question? That would be a clear uh, truth versus loyalty. Uh, individual versus community. So um, uh, let me uh, let me give you an example of an ethical dilemma uh, in that context. Um, uh, you might uh, you you might be in a situation. Say uh, you're you're presenting uh, uh, you're presenting a, a research proposal for. A, not for your dissertation, but for a collective research uh, research project. Uh, and uh, during the presentation, you decide to to uh, you can decide to put the spotlight on you to make a, 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 an impression on uh, the panel members. And uh, in that case, well, you sort of betray your teammates, which is the community in this case. Whereas being a team member and not uh, sticking out, uh, so that would be that would be a, a dilemma. Whether because uh, putting yourself in the spotlight might uh, might uh, create opportunities for you that wouldn't present themselves if you didn't. So you antagonize your team teammates, but maybe uh, uh, get advancement promotion from from this from this opportunity. That would be a, an ethical dilemma. Uh, short term versus long term, I already explained with dissertation, whether you, you aim for high quality, which requires more effort versus low quality uh, research publications. And justice versus mercy. Let's say that uh, you, um, uh, you are uh, invigilating an exam and uh, uh, someone, uh, uh, someone shows up uh, uh, six minutes late uh, because uh, they uh, they uh, they sprained their ankle, and you can see the, that they they have a, they have a bandage around their around their foot, and uh, you're not supposed to allow anyone in five minutes after the start of the exam. So, do you show mercy, given that no one else uh, no one else uh, except other students can, uh, can see this, or do you uh, reject the, the, the injured student from entering the exam room there? That, those are uh, small ethical dilemmas, okay? So, uh, I mean, you might think that uh, these simple examples are clear cut, uh, have clear cut courses of action for you. But in fact, depending on your values and uh, who you are as a person, uh, uh, you might take a different approach to these, uh, uh, depending on who you are. So they're not. There's nothing. There's no universal course of action for everyone, even faced with these not very subtle uh, uh, situations. And uh, please bear in mind that uh, dilemmas are hard by their very nature. If, if there were a simple course of action, it wouldn't be a dilemma in the first place. Yeah. All right, is that it? Um, Mohammed, uh, was that enough uh, extra explanation? Yeah, I think it's very obvious, it's quite clear. Oh, I meant, uh, mo sorry, too many Mohammeds. Uh, Mohammed El Kutur, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, and he said okay in the in the chat for those of you not uh, following. So um, 
what I suggest we do, because I'm, I'm already running out of time, which is a, a, con a constant occupational hazard for me, is that we won't go back to rooms. Uh, here is a second, a second, um, uh, a, a second uh, mini case. This time it's a teaching case. Uh, so let me read it very quickly, but it's gonna stay on screen all the time. And feel free to ask me questions. Uh, and what we'll try to do is uh, identify which dimensions uh, are uh, articulated in this particular dilemma and uh, how one's values could guide us to a, an answer. All right, so let me read it very quickly. As teaching assistant, you are reviewing business plans that have been submitted by student teams. All defense of these plans to a panel of entrepreneurs will take place later this week. The panel's assessment is half the grade and the other half is peer assessment and class participation. One segment of one team's business plan is expressed much, in much better English than the rest of the 42 page document. You cut and paste the first sentence of the suspicious segment and discover that the whole venture strategy section in question in the business plan is word for word the strategy statement of an existing overseas company. You conclude that this is a clear case of plagiarism, albeit not of academic plagiarism, strictly speaking. And you know that in your university, academic plagiarism by uh, by students uh, warrants immediate expo expulsion according to the university rules. Six students co-authored the coursework, but who contributed to what section isn't documented. The professor in charge of the course has already sent out to the panel members the business plan and is unreachable before the day of the jury. So what do you do? So. Before we uh, answer, what do you do? What kind of uh, dimensions do you think are, are uh, mobilized in this dilemma? And feel free to just talk. Uh, no need to raise your hand. We're among ourselves. Anybody? Is everyone too hungry to, to answer? Okay, so uh, let me put it another way. If you believe that there is a truth to loyalty dynamic in the dilemma, uh, raise your hand. Ah, so uh, at one, okay. Uh, if you believe there is an individual versus community dilemma, raise your hand. So Nisreen, you better lower your hand and raise it again if you want to. to uh... <laughs> if you believe there's a short-term versus long-term uh, dynamic in this dilemma, Raise your hand. And finally, if you think there is a justice versus mercy dilemma, raise your hand. Okay, so we, we have a, so we have a two identified dimensions here: truth versus loyalty and justice versus mercy. 
So um, I agree with, uh, with uh, both of these um, and let me explain why. Um, uh, first of all, uh, this coursework is the, not the typical uh, academic coursework because it is, it is sent to outsiders of the university. So uh, it not only exposes uh, the reputation of the co-authors, and there's no, no way so far to know whether all co-authors are aware of the cut and paste that was made in the strategy segment, but uh, if anyone can uh, Google the sentence and find the same, the, the verbatim quote online, that means that an entrepreneur might also uh, uh, detect the plagiarism and that would harm the reputation of the university uh, in, a, in some sense. Uh, secondly, uh, the justice versus mercy is very clear is that uh, it's not academic plagiarism. And so uh, expelling a student for non-academic plagiarism is probably too harsh a measure. Uh, so, so for, for this kind of work, because uh, there might simply uh, be a mistake. Uh, they forgot to quote, that they forgot to cite the, the website. And, and uh, perhaps there was a mix up in, um, in the assembly of the business plan and uh, the citation was uh, present in a draft, but an earlier draft ended up being uh, submitted to the professor. So, what needs to be done here is more investigation before ruling one way or another. So uh, in practice, uh, it might be that two of the six students were responsible for the strategy section, for example, but uh, one did the cut and paste without the other one knowing, and it might be impossible to punish one student without punishing the other for something for which they are blameless. So that also uh, introduces an individual versus team uh, dilemma here. So, so this is not a, a clear cut uh, situation. So how would values uh, here uh, help address the situation? Um, well, uh, and I see a lot more justice versus mercy now in the chat. Let's uh, ask someone who expressed their values to, to, uh, uh, to volunteer uh, and uh, show how their values could, could uh, inform how to, uh, how to not betray them in a face with this situation. Right? Because the whole point when faced in a, with a dilemma is that someone is asking you, in essence, to betray your values. So how, how, does, this, how does this situation uh, betray your values and how can you navigate uh, uh, the pressure without yielding? Hmm? Who wants to, among those who have uh, posted their values, does anyone want to volunteer and we'll try and uh, uh, develop the rhetoric to defend, defend the decision? Uh, sorry, Prof, uh, should we talk about our values or the values that were shared with us? No, 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 uh, it, it's, the idea here is that uh, the ultimate guide to when you face dilemmas is to follow your values. So uh, it has to be personal values. So I see that some, some uh, participants have uh, posted their values. So if, uh, if one of them wants to volunteer and we'll, we'll, we'll develop a, an argument together. So I show you how. Obviously I'm, I've condensed what is a, a, a semester long course into 40 minutes, which is not possible. So we'll, we, we have to go very quickly, but the idea 
is that uh, if you start working on your values now, you'll be, you'll, you'll be less defenseless later down the road. So who wants to volunteer? Uh, Mohamed El Koutour? Okay, Professor. Uh, okay, I so think... you, did you post your values earlier or? Yeah, yes. Yes, respect others and equity. Yeah. Okay, so uh, very good. So, so uh, respect is a, is a is respect for others is is a value that is shared by many cultures and and so uh, um, the question here is uh, how would you uh, so uh, what what would you what would be your course of action here now that you know what dimensions are at play and given that you want to honor your uh, respect for others but you also expect others to respect others too. And uh, of course, equity, which is, uh, I would say in this context, uh, synonymous with, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with uh, well, I, uh, equity is, I think, more synonymous with mercy than justice, I would say, but that's, yeah. maybe that's my interpretation. Is that- uh, yes, That's what I want to, to talk about actually. I wanna so I wanna talk about justice versus mercy because in this case we we can we can say that um, for this for this teaching assistant to to have mercy for this uh, student uh, and maybe give him opportunity to explain more why why he why he did this plagiarism and so on and uh, yes. And, and from the other hand, we can also we can also um, do justice for the, for the all because in comparison with other students, we have to we have to be uh, let's say um, we have to to be to be we have to applicate justice because uh, because in comparison with others. If the student um, uh, uh, participate in a uh, in a in a plagiarism or in a plagiarism act, he should uh, he should be punished. And then we we can give um, an example for other students that uh, we are we are we are um, maybe. Um, maybe we 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 applicate them. The, the justice slogan and also equity in comparison with others, if I might. Okay, clear. Can, I, can I ask you what your, your, your field of research is? Um, it's uh, management sciences, human resources okay. management. Okay, HR. So uh, are you, do you have any uh, familiarity with business, plan, uh, business planning and entrepreneurship and so on? Yes, a little bit, Professor. Okay, so one thing that is important here is that uh, entrepreneurs tend to cut corners themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can argue that uh, they will probably, even though they are external to the university, the, the reputation is not so much as play as, as might be perceived because entrepreneurs are easygoing. They know students can cut corners and entrepreneurs themselves tend to, to try and cut corners uh, through red tape and so on. So they're not the most uh, rigid audience either in the first place. Uh, secondly, uh, you're right that uh, before uh, judging, more needs to be known. And so the first thing to do is investigate, clarify. And uh, it might simply be, as I said earlier, that there was a some miscommunication between team members and that there is another version that uh, failed to be submitted that correctly cited uh, the external uh, website. So uh, the problem is easily resolved by adding a footnote saying, uh, this strategy is inspired by blah, blah, blah. And there's no longer any plagiarism, academic or otherwise. So uh, uh, publishing 
a revised version of the business plan after the submission deadline, but uh, could be a, a solution too. Now, uh, clearly, uh, it, it, students uh, who realize the mistake they made will already be very frightened uh, that they might be facing expulsion if, uh, so that this is probably for them a teaching moment, a teachable moment, and they will probably not, uh, they will probably uh, uh, be better at citing in, in future. So, so uh, there's a way to, to transform the situation into something transformative for the students too. So, so uh, these ways you can uh, embody your, your values and still, uh, and still resolve the dilemma, all right? Dude, is that, is that clear? Uh, Mohammed? Oh, there's no messages. Yes, yes, of course, Professor. Yeah. Okay, so right. does anyone else have any questions on, on the, the, the argumentation I developed to, to address this following one's values? Do, do, uh, I know we're, we're almost over time, I think, or yeah, we're already over time. Yeah. Well, nobody, there's nobody after us, so. Uh, I guess uh, that's why uh, Professor Malik did not uh, call me to order. So, so uh, I hope this uh, uh, this short illustration uh, 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 was helpful to you. And uh, I just have a, a one word of conclusion. Uh, if there are no further questions, but I can I can uh, I can linger a little longer in Zoom if if necessary. Uh, and uh, my conclusion is once again, uh, uh, and and uh, this was, uh, uh, yeah, here we go. Is once again, uh, gather your go to hell capital. So, and that means financial capital, human capital, social capital, cultural capital, uh, natural capital, if the case may be, so that uh, when someone puts you in a situation. Uh, uh, which is a, an ethical dilemma to you, but it may not be to them. Uh, not everyone shares the same values. You can just walk away from the situation. So uh, obviously uh, in some contexts, that means having a savings. And if you have enough savings to walk away from a job, which uh, asks you to betray your values, well, you can do that. But it cannot be human capital if you, if you develop uh, rhetorical skills to deflect ethical dilemmas that will help you uh, not uh, betray your values in future. Social capital is important too. And this was, uh, this was expressed in uh, group two's uh, course of action, which was asking your advisor for advice on the situation. Indeed, uh, you will have along your professional life as scholars, mentors, that uh, are outside your institution and to which you can go to to ask for advice when you're facing a difficult situation. So please, uh, please network outside your institution so you're not dependent on a single person or a single institution to, to navigate your, your, your career path. And uh, obviously cultural capital is interesting too because uh, cultural capital is something that takes a little longer to develop, but it enables you to span different cultures. And when I say culture here, I mean, uh, uh, I, I don't not only mean national cultures, but I also mean professional cultures and occupational cultures. And if you need uh, references on these, uh, do not hesitate to contact me. So just to clarify, national cultures are uh, uh, cultures like Moroccan culture, or uh, French culture or Berber culture. It doesn't have to, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as a state. Uh, nations and states are not the same construct, even though most of the history in our part of the world tends to conflate them. Uh, occupational cultures are, uh, uh, or professional cultures are, uh, are uh, cultures of profession. So accounting has its own culture. Marketing has its own culture, IT has its own culture, and so on. 
And so management researchers have their own culture, finance researchers have a different culture and so on and so forth. And finally, uh, organizational cultures, well, uh, that is uh, institutional cultures. So uh, if you work for IBM, you have a certain culture in the same industry, Apple, uh, Hewlett Packard have different uh, organizational cultures. And in academia, uh, UN6P has its specific culture, but uh, um, uh, I, I, Al Qayyadi University in Marrakesh. Did I pronounce this right? Probably not. Anyway, uh, uh, the uh, University Mohammed V has a different culture. And indeed, schools within uh, universities can also have an intersection of institutional culture and occupational culture. So uh, these are, if you are able to operate in different cultures, that also gives you more options going forward. Uh, so that you can uh, avoid uh, unnecessarily uh, uh, disagreeable situations. Thank you all very much. And of course, please stay safe. Thank you very much, Dr. Mark.